In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the unbreakable iron farm. It is easy to make and achieves top iron farm drop rates. I will also show you how to easily breed and sort the villagers needed to make the iron farm work into a trading hall. Get your blocks out and let's get ready to build. Hello everybody, my name is Prowl. There's a cat that just spawned behind me and I'm going to show you today how to make an unbreakable iron farm. This thing's easy to make. It only requires one layer. It's super easy to set up the villager breeding. You can put it anywhere up high in the sky, deep down in the ground or right here on the surface. It has a trading hall included with it and you're going to get lots and lots and lots of iron. Now we will be building this together in a creative world. I am actually on my survival empire world where I have built this farm in survival, but I'll show you how to build it in creative mode just to give you that full step-by-step -step process. But first I'd like to go over a few of the mechanics. Oh, oh, Hey, Oh, wow. Look at them. Do not skip this part. If you do, you will very likely have problems with your farm not working and I will not help you in the comments down below because all of the answers to all of your questions as to why this farm is not working for you is going to be covered in this video. Follow the video, the farm will work. It's that simple. So first, where can golems spawn? Golems can spawn in a cube like area within a 16 by 12 around the bed. That means you can go in this case, the bed counts as one. You can go one, two, three, four, five down or six up from the pillow of the bed and eight in one direction and technically seven in the other direction. But to make things a little bit easier, it's going to say eight in all directions. So eight in all directions, side to side from the bed, six up, five down. That's your spawnable area for iron golems from the center bed of the village. Keep in mind the word center bed because this is going to matter with how large we make our farm a little bit later. Next, it must be a village, meaning that you have to have at least one villager, although it will be more I'll talk about later, but you have to have a villager within a certain radius of the bed. Now it could be, I believe, and don't quote me on this part, up to 32 blocks horizontally. So like in this axis here, but the restricting one is vertically. A villager has to be within four blocks up or down of a bed. You can see my green markings there. If you have a villager way up here, he's not going to be able to link with the bed. He's too high. Same thing if I have him down here. It looks like he's in range, but he's not. He actually needs to be one block higher to be able to link with that bed. So you have to have an established village. Golems are always going to spawn on the highest available block. Meaning if you were to have two layers, I have something down here, maybe a floor for my villagers. I have an area up here for golems to spawn. They're not going to spawn down here. Nope, no golems down bottom. The highest available area is where the golems will spawn. So you would see them spawn on the top platform, not anything below. Older tutorials and older farms that you may have done even up to less than a year ago will not have worked this way. If you have your farm built with multiple layers now, or you see tutorials with a farm with multiple layers, that is outdated. It does not work that way anymore. One layer is all you need. Now, as we go through here, I will show you how to make things with the farm and why I make the things the way that I do to make the farm unbreakable. But keep in mind, this is Bedrock Edition, so nothing is truly unbreakable. And I do have some tr like troubleshooting tips that I will give you at the end, just in case something happens with the farm. Also, you cannot have more villagers than beds. If you have more villagers than beds, the farm stops working completely. Why that is, I don't know. But if you have even have one more villager in the beds, the farm's not going to work anymore. So sorry, buddy, you're getting voted off the island. At least 75% of your villagers need to be able to work. If 75% of the villagers cannot work, then the farm will stop working. So right now, five workstations, five villagers. This is more than 75%. I take out a couple workstations and we only have at this point 60% of the villagers are able to work. 
the farm's going to stop producing iron golems. So make sure you have enough profession blocks and villagers that can access them. We will design it in this way. So now that we've gone over some of the biggest mechanics and rules, I'll bring up some more as we build the farm, but let's actually jump into building the farm itself. Okay, so let's get started. I want to show you how to make the spawning platform first. So wherever you're going to end up having your villagers go, whether they be somewhere underground, at ground level, above ground level, it doesn't matter. You're going to go up from that spot. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to use this to mark the center with a different block for now. Five. Where that's temporary. That block's actually going to end up coming out in the future. But one, two, three, four, five. Later on, this level right here is going to be bed level. That's going to be important to know later. For now, you could get rid of those blocks. We'll mess with that a little bit later. Now we're going to create a water flow here and water can flow eight blocks. So what we're going to do from the center block is we're going to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks in each direction and make a big square platform. Once you've done that, what you have is a 17 by 17 platform, one block in the middle, eight blocks in each direction. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go up one and then go out four and do this on all four sides and encircle the farm. This is going to be one of the things that makes the farm unbreakable. Now, once you have that portion up, you can go through and just border it one block above. You do not have to use glass or any like unspawnable blocks. I know in the past, a lot of people have done that. Again, this is the unbreakable iron farm. You don't have to worry about that here. Any block will do as a border block and it only needs to go up one block high, except for the corners the corners you're just gonna go ahead and do that number right there in all four of them now if you are enjoying this video clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel makes youtube and the algorithm show the video to more people and it helps out a ton it's the best donation that you can give if you want to support the channel more check out my survival empire series which is the world i'm standing in right now i do build a lot of cool farms on top of a lot of cool buildings and structures here and I am building two warring empires, maybe more in the future, that as I build them up, they will be going to war. We're early on in the series. The war is not started yet. Make sure you hop in. Defensive measures are going up as we speak. And if you're finding this video helpful, click the super thanks button down below and leave a one time donation along with a comment on this video to let me know that it helped you out. Let's go back to making the farm. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to come below where we have that brick. We're going to come down, I don't know, say about three hoppers worth downwards, just in case you want to expand. You might even want to come a fourth. So this fourth hopper, we're going to come down. I'm just going to put some temporary blocks over here and then I'm going to run some hoppers this way, just like this. And then we can add in a storage area here that's nice and simple, doesn't need any kind of item filters. I could make this deeper if I want to, but I'm in a super flat world and I'm, I'm just not going to dig down anymore but most of you probably already know how to make a storage system. Probably know how to get cows out of your farm as well. This guy, he's gotta go. Get out of here. All right, you're lucky, I'll let you live. Um, and we're gonna just put in a whole bunch of storage chests here, just like this. As many as you think you'll need. Um, usually somewhere around, depending on how long you're gonna AF, how much you're gonna AFK here, having like nine or 12 or something like that is probably gonna be pretty good. Um, for now, I'm just gonna come over that much, throw some hoppers into the back here, like so. And bam, all of our items, they'll come into these chests right here. Um, we'll get mostly iron. We'll get some poppies. We'll get some string. And that's about it. Unless you have other like mobs wander in and get killed here, which can happen as well and will not cause any kind of problem. Now, for this part, I don't want any of the villagers dropping down in here. So I'm just going to cover this portion right here up. No problem. And then also uh, we need to make sure we have access to our items to drop down there. So we knock out that brick right there and then place a hopper facing down in there. Now, as golems die, or even cats, they'll kind of pop up here into this and die too. Their drops will very easily flow right there. Now, this next part is the most important part, and it is the beds. So we're gonna make a platform, and we're gonna slowly make this platform bigger as we go. We're gonna circle this hopper right here, just below um, the platform here, and we're gonna place beds down. One, two, three, and four. Now, what's going to happen is one of these beds is going to become the center bed to the village. The way we're designing a farm, it doesn't matter which bed is the center. 
Um, and the reason why that's important and the reason why a lot of people's iron farms break is because the center bed can shift when you when the game updates or sometimes if chunks get loaded or unloaded kind of oddly or based on going in and out of another portal there's a lot of things that can make a village for whatever reason shuffle the beds around and change the center bed so what we're doing here is we're making this thing unbreakable. We're going to make it so it does not matter which bed is the center bed or some of you may have heard the term the village leader. I know Silent Whisperer likes to use that term a lot. Um, it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter at all. And this is going to make it so your farm will always work. So we're going to go ahead and those center beds right there. We're going to go ahead and surround them with two blocks and then we're going to face beds like this. Now, once you get up to 20 beds, and 10 villagers, the farm will start producing golems, okay? But for every 10 villagers that you have, the farm can hold up to one more golem. So if you have 20 villagers, two golems can be alive at the same time. 30 villagers, three golems can be alive at the same time. It does not increase how fast the golems come. The rate and speed in which the golems appear is the same on every farm. It does not matter. What's different is the number of villagers that you have in the area equals how many golems could be alive at a time. Three golems alive at a time or 30 villagers is the optimal number. Once you go beyond that point, you're not going to be getting much return and it's not really worth your time. But if you're going to be using this as a villager trading hall as well, which we are going to, having extra beds is good. So if you go this full length around, just like I'm showing you right here, you can go up to 44 uh -huh. villagers just off of this one ring. It's 44 villagers because this is 44 beds. If you want only four, uh, 40 villagers, take out four beds. If you want only 30 villagers, you know, take out 10 more beds beyond that. It doesn't really matter exactly what order they're placed in as long as you have them tightly packed around the center like this. Also, if you want more villagers here, you can you can do more villagers. If I were to make another platform down here at this level and place more beds around just in the exact same order I did up there, you can get up to 88 villagers. Um, if you're going to be using this as a trading hall, which a lot of people are going to because you're already getting the villagers here. So why not? Then this method may be preferred for you. But once you're done placing all the beds down, you can get rid of the solid blocks. They're not needed anymore. Now I want to show you the easy way to get your villagers in here, bred up without a breeder and ultimately get this thing working. OK, now for the part that's hard for most people, but we're going to make easy. If you want to know how to actually get the villagers in here again, you're going to need two of them. You can watch my video on how to move villagers. I'm not going to show that part because I have a whole separate video on it, or you can get a couple of zombie villagers and cure them as well. You can cure zombie villagers by giving it the weakness effect by hitting it with the splash potion of weakness or hitting it with a weakness tipped arrow and then feeding it a golden apple. You can also look up videos on how to do that. But for now, bam, bam. We got two villagers here. You see sparklies, they are linking to the beds, which is good. Now, what do we want to do with these guys? Well, we want them to breed. So I'm just going to give them a whole bunch of bread. That's right. We're just going to let them breed out here in the wild. There they go. We got some love hearts going. And also, if you're trying to this out on a creative test world first, know that it's probably not going to work if you have it set to always day because the time that always day actually is in the world can can cause problems with things like villager breeding villager working and that sort of thing but now it's a waiting game you just have to wait for these guys to breed up which luckily on bedrock edition happens pretty quickly now here don't be like me and leave a way for your villagers to hop up and get inside the beds um yeah, we need to. What happens if I get this guy out? Yeah, he yeah, he went up and and he burned. You live and you learn. Block this off so he can't get up. Now we don't have to worry about that problem. And eventually you're going to reach this point that we're at right now. You have all of your villagers. You know, you have them all because they will only breed up to the number of beds that you have available, which is perfect. You don't end up with too many villagers. You don't have to build a complex breeder. Just get them out here. And you may be wondering what this outer like ring is right here. 
You're going to see that here in just a moment. Um, also, you're going to need them all to be adults. We're not quite at that point yet, but we're about to be. And if you have any nitwits, these guys in the green, yeah, get rid of them. Go ahead and kill them. Don't worry, your villagers, they will very quickly replace the nitwits and uh, get you back up to your population cap. Now, while the rest of your villager, baby villagers end up growing up, which will be a few more minutes, it'll be a few more minutes, we can start to set up the chambers in which we are going to put them. Now, we're actually going to end up trapping the villagers in these little chambers here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm actually going to pop this out right here, just like this. Actually, I don't need this back area, so I'm going to build this up. And maybe you do this underground and you're carving this hole into the wall, or maybe you're, you're doing this like above ground, right? And you have to build a little chamber. Either way is fine. And what you're going to want to do is just have the same number of these chambers as you do number of villagers. So I'm only going to do a few just as well. You know what? Let's do let's do them all. Why not? Let's do 44. OK, so we have these chambers set up and a lot of the villagers seem to like to just walk into them. But this is what you do right now. It's a mess. How are you supposed to turn this into a trading hall? Well, first of all, if you don't want to turn it into a trading hall, you don't have to make all of the chambers. Just go ahead and line up like a row of profession blocks on like each side or something like that. And it should work out fine. Um, and they can just free roam in here. Make sure no mobs can spawn or anything like that. And you're, you're fine. This area would be fully protected. In this case, we do want to trade with them. So let's say I want some librarians. Well, I'll go ahead and plop down maybe a whole row of these lecterns just like this and then maybe i want to have some farmers i'll go ahead and i'll plop down six of those because i want to get some golden carrots i want some fletchers to be able to trade sticks to or maybe to um i don't know like buy like get um arrows uh tipped arrows from i want some stone cutters so i can get things like quartz and stuff like that so maybe i'll fill up the rest of this row with stone cutters and then maybe lastly, I would like to have some toolsmiths. That way I can trade the iron I'm getting from the farm to get emeralds, which is actually a very productive thing to do. And maybe I want to get a bunch of tools or something like that. It's like backup tools for big projects that I may do. Right. So go ahead, line them all up just like that. You can just place them all down. It's not a big deal. Now, normally, if you're familiar with the normal like way of doing things, you would have already trapped the villagers first and you would set down a block and take all the time to look around and figure out who who is set to what block, right? We don't have to do that. They kind of fill themselves in. This guy, he belongs to this block. I'm going to jump up. I'm going to push him in. I'm going to cover him up. Same thing with this guy right here. I'm going to push him in. Oh, come on. I'm going to cover him up. And they're actually going to filter themselves for you. But you don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything. This is by far the easiest way that I've ever found to do this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just trap all the ones that are standing on top of their profession blocks now, because that's going to be the easiest thing to do, just like this. And then just to make sure we don't have any like baby villagers or anything like that get trapped with these guys, we'll go ahead and we'll put a trap door right here. Also, if somehow a baby zombie spawns in or gets inside of here, this will keep their faces from getting eaten. Now, you're going to have some profession blocks where the villagers won't just go stand on top of them. So for those ones, what you need to do, just need to add in a line of blocks at the same level of the profession blocks. That way the villagers feel like they have to get up on the block to get to their profession block. And then whenever it becomes that time, which it should if I do time set day here, then you can do the same process of go in, push them in, cover them up, put down a trap door. And then after you get them all into place, you can go ahead and knock out all of those blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work that process now just to get all of these guys exactly where they need to be. And as you can see here, everything is now in place and working, except for the fact that I can't count. You would have seen that in an edit earlier in a video. It's it's 40 beds, not 44 beds. Why I can't count or thought it was 44 beds. I don't know, but if you follow my instructions, which apparently I can't even do, you go through and you double check everything. You got to make sure, like I said earlier, you do not have more villagers than beds. I found that out while working this because I got to what I thought was done and golems weren't spawning. So I checked the things that I know can make the, the farm not work. And we're going to go over those troubleshooting steps here in just a moment. But step number one, make sure you follow the instructions, right? 
don't be a prowl. Now, in the event that for some reason your farm stops working, maybe something weird happens with your world or some kind of crazy update comes out that maybe breaks things somehow or maybe you were shuffling things around down bottom you wanted to move something around and all of a sudden you find that your iron farm's not producing iron golems anymore some basic things that you can do number one always double check to make sure you have the same number of villagers and beds that's that's important make sure all your villagers have a workstation and make sure they are linked to the workstation that's in front of them if this villager right here is linked to a workstation down there he can't work at it. Remember, 75% of our villagers have to work during the day. So if they're not linked up properly, your farm's not gonna work. Check that. After you've checked that, if you're still not working, what you're gonna want to do, remove all of the beds, remove all of the workstations. The villagers can stay. The villagers are fine. Make sure you don't have any other workstations or beds within range of the villagers and the farm, and then go ahead and start replacing them. Put down all the beds first, and then, you can choose how you want to redo the villagers again. You could do it the way that I showed you here before, or you can do it the way of, hold on, let me get this guy to actually reset his, his skin. Come on, buddy. There we go. Or you can do the method of place the profession block down, look around, wait for somebody to link to it. Oh, yep, I know it's that guy. And then you can do it that way. You can do it either way is fine, but go through, replace all the beds first, then get everybody linked back up to their profession blocks, and it should work again. Uh, one more tip though, I should have said this earlier because half of you guys have probably already started doing this, but um, one other thing, once you break all the beds and profession blocks, let it sit for like 10 minutes, log, log off your world or restart your realm or server and get back on and then place everything down and give it a few minutes for the village to kind of like repopulate or rebuild itself. Villages can be really funky, which is why I wanted to make the unbreakable iron farm because nobody likes to deal with problems for this thing. Once you get it set, it's set. It's done. It will continually work forever. It does not matter if something happens with the game in the bed shuffle. It's not going to matter at all. It's still going to work fine. Also, I told you, I think earlier that I'm going to show you where you can put a bed if you want to sleep. Just make sure the beds more than like five or more blocks above the villagers, like where they're standing. So we're at Y level negative 60 right now. You see the Y level in the top left hand corner. So if we go to like Y level 55, right? If I go right here and I place the bed literally right here, it's too far above the villagers for them to link to it. So it's not going to mess up your village at all. Don't bring any other villagers in the area. You can now have additional workstations around even down in here. It's not going to mess anything up. You're going to be all good to go. If you've made it this far in a video, you're awesome. And I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for your support. Watching the whole video is a great way to support the channel. There's other free ways you can support the channel too. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Click the like button on this video and drop me a comment down below. None of that costs you a dime and it actually provides great support to the channel. Also, if you want to support the channel monetarily, you can either add a membership or a super thanks by clicking the join button or super thanks button down below. Otherwise, let me know how you like seeing the tutorials again from the channel and maybe I'll make some more. I'll see you next time. Bye. How dare this guy photobomb my outro.